Let's see what we've got going on in the comments section. My friends are here to help us out. This one says, at the ocean the other day, I was looking for shells and the water was up to my ankles. A few hours later, in the same spot, the water was above my knees. How'd that happen? Great question, Charlotte. This calls for a fax bid. The water level in the ocean changes because of the moon and the tides. The moon, but it's in the sky. I know. You know what gravity is, right? Yeah, it's the reason we're not all floating around. Exactly. Like this. Oh boy! Wow. Wow. Great seas as ghost. Well, the moon has gravity too, and it's strong enough it can move the ocean. At high tide, the ocean is pulled by the moon to its highest level and the water reaches farther onto the beach. Low tide is the opposite. That's why the water changes how deep it is at different times in the same spot. Whoa, mind blown. That happened to me too when I learned this. You can also check what time the tides will be. That way you know if the water will be getting deeper or shallower as you search for shells or swim. Let's see what else we've got. This one says, I heard the ocean sometimes changes color and that can mean danger, true? The ocean changing color sounds cool to me. That would be cool. But I think what they mean is that sometimes the ocean can be darker or lighter in a certain spot. Also, a part of the water might look calmer than where waves are breaking around it. And yes, this can mean danger. Why? Isn't calm water safer? Not when it just looks calm in one spot. That could mean there's a rip current. Which means? A rip current is a really powerful, narrow area of water that moves out quickly away from the shore and can pull people far away from the shore with it. Well, that's concerning. What if you get pulled out in one? Well, do stay calm. A rip current is no joke, but it won't pull you underwater as long as you think so you don't sink. Don't try to swim back to the beach against the current. This will only make you tired. Do try to wave and call for help. Then swim to the side along the beach to get out of the current. Once you're free from it, you can swim with the waves back to shore. Or if you're tired, you can put your feet up and float on your back until help arrives. I want to keep my eyes out for rip currents next time I'm at the beach. Rip currents can be really hard to spot, especially if you're not a pro. That's why you should only swim at lifeguarded beaches. Ask if there are any rip currents nearby before you swim. You should also look for warning signs or flags. Well, our time's about up. Ready to wave bye? Wait, waves, just one more. This one says, waves are the best, most rad part of going to the ocean, but sometimes they can knock you over and make it hard to get up. What can I do? I wanna know this one too. Easy one. A lot of what I just said about rip currents has to do with being wave smart too. Only swim where there's a lifeguard on duty. Look around for warning signs or flags, or ask how rough the water will be before you get in. And remember, waves change throughout the day, so if it starts to get too rough for you, take a break. You can build a sandcastle instead. Hmm, Queen Charlotte. Has a nice swing to it. See you by the sand. <laughs>